Hey, 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 welcome to Credit Makes Sense with the tip of the Frugal Credit Nista, where we talk about money, credit, and everything in between. Super excited to have you guys here today as we help many of you who've been asking make sense of what is going on with all of these student loan forgiveness announcements. More than likely, you're wondering, do I qualify? So that is a valid uh, question, and we are going to make sense of it today. If you like what I'm laying down, definitely feel free to subscribe and hit that notification bell if you're already um, a member, welcome back to the Prosperity team and community. Super excited to have you back with us. All right, let's get to it. So today, Biden has wiped out about nine and a half million dollars worth of student loan debt, right? And it's been in three primary or main areas. And interestingly enough, it has been more of a cleanup or something that should have already been done but had either not been done or greatly diminished during the boss's time in office. And one of the three areas that he has wiped out has been the total um, and permanent disability. I was going to say dismemberment, but it's disability, right? So when someone has been deemed to be total and permanently disabled, then they were supposed to be able to apply for relief and then have their student loans wiped out. And at least when I was in the industry, they couldn't use student loans again, unless they basically said they're no longer um, disabled anymore. It has always been kind of a tedious process, but with the Boston office, it became even more, um, from what I've heard, a tedious process. And so what he has done is eliminate about $7.1 billion dollars for borrowers who are eligible for the total and permanent disability uh, relief. And this is dope because I know, I don't know if you guys remember, but earlier in the year, there were a lot of people who were not filling out that long, tedious application process correctly. So about 1.3, I don't know if it was million or billion, but it was a lot of folks and a lot of money who were no longer eligible because they didn't fill out that application process, right? And the application process sucked. I will be like, it was not a good process. So what he's done is that he's like, okay, we know it sucks. So those of you who were denied earlier in the year, guess what? It was 1.3 billion. Guess what? Don't we worry about it. You get your relief is wiped out. Those of you who have uh, through the Social Security Administration been marked as total, totally and permanently disabled, guess what? Don't even have to worry about filling out that loan application relief process fund. As long as it's in the social security process, you're good. It's relieved. So that was about, I want to say 5.8 billion if I remember. I could pull it up. <laughs> if I remember correctly, yes, that was 5.8 billion for over 300,000 disabled borrowers through the total and permanent uh, disability discharge program, which is dope. That should have happened. Anyway, remember I said he's done a lot of cleanup. That's what I'm talking about. Now, the next one was for those who were in schools that were either defunct, had been bogus, predatory, no good, all of that good stuff. And I know because I'm from Illinois, the ITT was one of them. I can't think of another one. Maybe you guys can help me out. I remember it started with the E. Um, but these schools were found to no longer be eligible for federal aid and all of the people who went there during that time frame that they were found to be no good were supposed to be eligible for a um, discharge, basically relief. Get your student loans wiped out so you have enough funds to go and get a real college education, right? And so when the boss was in office, I don't know if you guys remember this. I did this inside of my uh, credit makes sense.me community. We talked about um, she made the process much more difficult and she only gave them partial relief instead of full relief. So can you imagine not only wasting your time at a school, using up some of your eligible student loan aid, and then have the government change a policy that was created to provide relief because they know how um, no good some of these schools are, and then said, well, either A, you're not eligible, or B, well, you know, we'll give you some of your money back. Like, what is that? Well, you should have been monitoring these people anyway, because you're the one that's giving them money. That, um, it's federal loans, and you should have been uh, protecting me anyway before you just started dispersing these loans. So uh, to me, it's, it should, it's a dual responsibility. I went into a rant. That happens sometimes. But <laughs> the boss, uh, yeah, was, was something else. And so what Biden has done, he has um, those who, it's three schools, guys. I don't remember the name of the three schools. I only remember IT, ITT Tech, the Technical Institute that's in Illinois. But he forgave all of those um, students who were impacted by those three schools that amounted to $55.6 million. And then he provided one billion dollars for other students who were defrauded by various schools as well. So 
So that's that. Remember, we talked about cleanup. This is another example. Another one was for military members. They um, get a special interest. Yeah, I guess a special interest rates if they have served in combat zones. In my opinion, it should be wiped out. They're serving our country. They're in combat zones. Okay. But anyway, <laughs> I'm going to read this one. I just looked this one up, but it was on August 20th. They announced that it would be waiving interest retroactively. So going back and waiving the interest for current and former active duty military members who were entitled to, but not granted an interest waiver uh, because they served in dangerous combat zones. A, I have so many thoughts on this. Like what? They serve in dangerous combat zones and we messing up their student loans. Why are they being student loans, right? What? Fight? Get rid of their student loans. They're serving in dangerous combat zones for our country and we're charging them interest, but period, like whole another ranch, y'all, whole other ranch. But those are, that's where the nine and a half billion dollars of student loan forgiveness has happened thus far, right? Which is dope. It's great. I will not knock this because we needed this in all of the areas that I mentioned. However, there are some areas where um, that have not happened, right? Number one, while he was campaigning, there was a promise of wiping out a minimum of $10,000 to every American that's being burdened by um, student loans, right? And then he's made some speeches where he's kind of backtracked. I don't know. Um, do I have the authority to do it? Yes. Yeah. Um, I don't know. If you went to Ivy League, then you don't need my help. Huh? I don't know. You know, private schools versus public universities. I'm thinking, you know, if you went to a private school, then let's be real. Those of us who went to the private schools, whether it be, what's the one with the A? Lord, I can't remember. A school of first today. They have Phoenix. That's not an A. <laughs> I'm sure it's the A in there first. Somewhere, right? So the feast in Phoenix, Arizona, there's my A. The Vry, um, what else? Kaplan, um, Western something, governors, like all of these are more expensive than what you would get in your standard uh, public university. However, they also provide things at a public university. Um, it's still kind of behind in, such as online classes, robust online classes. Um, they've also they've mastered that, uh, the ease, the flexibility in classes. And so that's why a lot of people who work um, have to worry about childcare and all of that. They're like, okay, if I can get onto my classes at nine o'clock in the morning, five o'clock, I mean, nine o'clock in the evening, five o'clock in the morning, et cetera, it created more flexibility. So a lot of us minorities, those in lower middle income neighborhoods, et cetera, we flocked to those schools, right? I, I'm one of them because they were more convenient for me to maintain a full-time job, take care of the household, and then focus on my school after everything has been on point or get up early to focus on school. So to say that we don't deserve forgiveness is troublesome to me, okay? I went to both a public and a private school. It's like, mm, -mm. So hopefully, I know I had some dates from the other article I was just looking at, but he is... Looking into or having someone look into uh, forgiveness. Number one, revamping the public service loan forgiveness, PSLF, public service loan forgiveness program for those of you who are teachers working in impoverished neighborhoods who filled out those applications and found out that they didn't apply them properly. And now you've got to start from scratch. A lot of uh, services got sued because of that. Um, so hopefully that'll be worked out for you guys because I hate the fact that you have to start from scratch. Hopefully he'll keep his promise of at least a $10,000 forgiveness. A lot of uh, consumer advocates and some of his um, fellow Democrat, Democrats are pushing for 50. He's a little hesitant because he knows that 50 will wipe out quite a bit of people's loans completely. And I guess there's something in him to say that's saying, you know, they should pay for something. Um, so those are the blocks. Amount, who should get it? Private, public, IV, doesn't matter. And he's saying, does he have the authority to do so? So that's where we're at. Now, those who are eligible for the student loan forgiveness, you shouldn't even have to wait this long, but I'm glad you got it. Those of us in my crew, I mean, we're still waiting to see what happens. But there's been so much that um, is going on from Afghanistan, from all of these um, natural disasters, to global warming that's causing the national disasters. I don't know how much... Uh, emphasis is going to be put on this now because there's other things that are more pressing. And I noticed that he created a plan. I don't remember what it's called, but essentially it didn't include student loans in it. <laughs> it wasn't the infrastructure plan. It was something else. Um, 
can't remember the name of it. I remember I'll put in the comments and use here before and definitely, you know, put in the comments and let me know as well. So I'm right along with you, my prosperity partners. I'm wondering when this 10K, 50K for everybody is going to be available. If you know beforehand, let me. And of course, when I know, I will definitely let you guys know. So hopefully this helps for my partners who were inquiring. If you ever have any questions uh, that you'd like for me to tackle here on Credit Makes Sense uh, channel, definitely let me know. I'll leave the link in order to do so. If you'd like to have an ongoing conversation, please feel free to join my free online community, creditmakesense.me. And naturally, if you'd like a one-on-one -on -one consultation or to inquire about any of our services, then I have the links down there below for you. Okay. Chat soon. Bye.